Yo, people, what's going on? It's Eagle Talks Football. We are back again with another video. Today, this is a live Arsenal News update with my boy, Deo. Deo, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good, man. Thanks for Let's having me. It. No worries. No worries. Let's get it going. We got a lot to talk about. Victor Ozyman is actually finally leaving Napoli. Where will he end up? We'll tell you. Also, uh, Arsenal have had a bid from the Saudi League for a current uh, impact player. And... We've also gotten an update on Mikhail Moreno's injury, and it's not looking good, ladies and gentlemen. But before we go any further, do me a favor. Please do hit that like button on the video. It helps out the channel massively. It helps boost the channel, higher up the algorithms to get more people to see it, and also get the channel to grow a lot more. So I would appreciate it if you guys can get this video to at least 300 likes. And if you haven't already liked the video, do it right now. Just need the thumbs up. But before we go any further, Deo, let's talk about good news or bad news first. Let's do all the bad news first. Okay. So bad news, uh, the bad news out the way. <laughs> the bad the bad news is that of course we heard uh, today that Mikel Moreno has has an injury and we know we knew about the injury but we now know how long he will be out with said injury. Mikel Moreno is expected to be sidelined for nearly 2 months with a fracture in his shoulder during his first training session. That has to be wow. very unlucky. So uh, he, of course, got got the injury initially by falling on his shoulder and and one of, and Gabby falling on top of him. I think it's Gabby Martinelli, um, and it's set to to be close to two injuries: the fractured shoulder and penciled in for mid October return after the next international break. So with with all that being said, Samuel McBell, reliable journalist, was the first to break it, and my initial thoughts is. We're cursed, bro. What's the chances the player gets injured in his first training training day with Arsenal? He gets injured in training. A player uh, falls on and and I don't even know what his injury history is, but I bet you any money he barely gets he barely got injured before he came to Arsenal and he gets injured uh, immediately. Let me just check his injury history. You want to laugh? No, laugh? I mean, I'm just I'm just I'm just saying like I I yeah it is. It is. It's unfortunate. That's what I would say. It's unfortunate. But um, look at this. This is his injury history at Real Sociedad. He missed a total of one, uh, three. What do you call it? Four, six. A total of thirteen games in his whole time at Real Sociedad. Actually, if you include this, another fourteen. So uh, a total of thirty games in five years. And at Arsenal, That's... he's already missed two. Oh, then that means. He's... 30 in five years, you know, six games per year. If he's missed two now, let's say he's going to miss four more games this season. And then every year he's going to miss five. <laughs> now nah, it doesn't, but it doesn't work. I think for me, the most important thing is the framing of what the, of what the journalists are saying. If you go back and look at what Sonny Mako said, it says close to two months. It's just the fact that they keep on rounding it upwards and not saying, Hey, because saying close to up until, which means any time from, you know, four to six, four weeks to eight weeks, which is a month to two months, a person can actually, depending on who they are now, you can speculate whether it's two months exactly. Or two, he, if he had said, uh, Marino is set to miss close to two months and above, then I'd be like, yo, that's, that's scary. But with the, and then again, you know, when we say injury, I think every team kind of, um, every team sometimes, uh, most teams would, what we would call a major injury, like we would say, okay, like the fractured shoulder doesn't mean he still can't play or whatever it is. But Arsenal might be like, no, we don't want you to play. But you're injured for now. Let's just, you know, you're an asset. But it is what it is. It's He's going to be out for a few games. Um, I think we still have what it takes in the team to be able to carry on without, um, you know, uh, without him. And, uh, and we'll see how we do in the North London Derby. There you go. Um, and you know what? You know how I said good news or bad news? There's really not too much good news uh, from any of the news stories today. But there is another story that we need to discuss. Um, quickly, Just let's just jump Let's just jump on this one before we go on to the Leandro Trossard one. Victor Azimin, it's official. He, uh, he's leaving Napoli. He's going on loan to Galatasaray. And they've reached an agreement. The, Itali the, the Turkish window is still open. They couldn't agree on a deal to for him to leave Napoli to go to Chelsea or anywhere else. Personally, for me, the Turkish uh, him going to the Turkish league is not really you know it's not uh, it's it's interesting. He turned down the move to Saudi Arabia, he turned down the move to Chelsea due to wages. To end up at Galatasaray is just like it feels like it's beneath him. Is that is that rude? 
I'm just I'm just mad at the fact that he eventually accepted a loan. Here's the thing. Victor Osman's agents all through this season, all through the transfer window said, Victor Osman will not take a salary reduction and will not take a loan deal. They said that all through the transfer window. Now, the salary thing is something that, well, you know, you can figure out a way eventually because if he's, you know, if he's, if you work it out with, with Napoli, he can come on loan. Napoli might pay maybe 30%. You pay 70 if you really need a striker like that. And these are some of the issues I was seeing when they, when they, we were linked with him. He didn't want a loan deal. If, if he had left that window open, he would have gotten a better offer somewhere else. Somebody else would have said, okay, we loan with an obligation to buy from Napoli over the next one year. Come play for us. Come play for Chelsea. Come play for any other big team. And they'll cover your, they'll cover half your salary. Napoli will cover half your salary. You still get what, you know, get paid what you're being paid. Um, the Chelsea deal, he turned it down because I think Osman is on like a 10 million, um, 10 million euros a year or 10 million pounds a year uh, salary. And Chelsea offered 4 million. Chelsea offered him 60k a week, bro. Yeah, they offered. I don't even know what weekly. Like, I I don't know the breakdown, but four million from ten million. That's a that's a that's a far cry, you know. So he yeah. wasn't going to take that offer. But the fact that he, they they went against what they were they, they insisted on, which is they would not take a loan deal all all transfer window, and then finally now took a loan deal. It's just it's just annoying. And I think this is just like the beginning of the cards falling down for him. The way he's pushing his career, he could have just told Napoli, look, I, you guys, let's think, go. I don't think it's fully on him. It's the people he left in charge, more or less. Yeah, but you you can make the call and say I don't mind taking a thirty percent salary cut if you can get me seven million somewhere else with um you know, uh, image rights. Yeah, no, I hear it. I hear it. You can overall, just say, get me, get me, over, get me, get me overall, image rights and and thirty percent. I'm, I'm happy he didn't end up in the Premier League and go to Chelsea though, because. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a positive, and he ended up at Galatasaray. Uh, it's more to say that Chelsea messed up with the negotiations over the contract, and they couldn't get personal terms agreed. But let's move on now from the fi- from this uh, Victor Osimhen story because he's it's not really an Arsenal story. It's more just one of the players we were linked to officially uh, moving. But this one here, this one here, when I seen this, I immediately said, "No, stay away." Do not sell a player now that the window is closed, Arsenal. Don't you dare. This is an immediate rejection, especially with the window being closed. Are the Saudi pro clubs stupid? Like, do they think we're going to sell a player that we want to keep, that we have a big part of our plans, just because they threw 38 million, 35 million euros at our, at, at, in, our, in, our, in our faces? For no, it's, because, it's, because, it's because their window is still open. So they'll still try and buy Their window them. officially closes today. So thank God. I know. And then, but they would still then, they would still try to buy players since their window was still open up until today. No, so, I, I hear it. But then if they offered like 50 million, maybe Arsenal would even think about it. But but 35 is not much. Um Arsenal turned down uh, the of the verbal offer for Leandro Trossard yesterday. It was a loan of five million plus an obligation to buy of 20 or 25. So it just doesn't make financial sense for Arsenal to even consider that, let alone even do it because of the footballing reasons, as he's such a key player, somebody who's a big part of our rotation in our attack and where our attack is not necessarily the strongest area of the pitch for us right now. Yeah, I mean, there's no way we should have taken... Even if they offered 50, we can't take that offer because we don't have cover for... Well, we do have Raheem Sterling now, but I don't know if that is enough for, enough cover for the left-hand side. Um, so, yeah, I... I'm glad they turned it down. It's a smart thing to do. Um, uh, Leandro Trossard, I'm mean, like the, out of out of nowhere. Saudi's just like, yeah, we want you. <laughs> it's like that's crazy. It's like there was no talks about him leaving. No talks about any links from anywhere. All of a sudden, it's yeah. But uh, but this is the world we're in now. The Saudi league seems to be here to stay, and they and they've got the money to spend. So, uh, we just need to keep an eye out and 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 hope that. You know, they don't throw his spana in the works. He's staying. That's the most important thing. That's the good news. He's not going anywhere. Um, we, turned, yeah, we, we turned it down, and that's the most important thing. But we also have a midfield crisis. So quickly just speak about this. With Declan Rice missing the Northland Derby due to the scandalous second yellow that was given, which we've spent a lot of time discussing, what are we going to do now in that midfield versus Tottenham? With Declan Rice out, Mikel Moreno out, Who's going to play in the midfield for Arsenal versus Tottenham? Do you have a rough idea of what you think we should go with 
versus Tottenham? Would it be Odegaard, uh, Jorginho, and Partey? Would it, that, that would, would be it? my that would be my midfield. Odegaard, Jorginho, and Partey. That would be my midfield for North London. Is there any other options outside of those? Not yeah. really. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to, if you wanted to be adventurous, I've seen. Um, um timber playing the midfield a couple of times and i've seen timber do a, a business at the double pivot so if i wanted to if i wanted to risk it um i bring in calafiri and timber as well or what about, you know what? What about or, zinchenko? Or zinchenko or i play zinchenko in the left eight so at this moment in time is Jorginho, Partey, and odegaard have enough legs to go up against tottenham and their in their quick counters i think they do I think they do. If we control the ball, if we control the game, if we dominate possession, that's where that's where we, we suffocate them where they don't have the ball. And off the ball, as long as we're compact enough to to stop their counter, um, I think I think we have enough. And of course, we need to remember that when we're talking about counter. So I would I would play a Calafuri and a Timber in this game, regardless, because one thing I can guarantee you is. Um, Arsenal know how to score from different ways. If we can't score because our midfield is a little light because of the injuries and the red card, once we can progress the ball up front and we can get a couple of um, free kicks and a couple of uh, corner corner kicks, we should be able to convert one of those. And defensively, we should be solid enough to just not concede. Yeah. That's 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 the way I would that's the way I would approach the game if I were Mikel Arteta. I would I would approach it from a defensive point of view, knowing that Arsenal and knowing that Tottenham are really horrible with um, set pieces. I'll try to get them on that on you know I'll try and get as many set pieces as possible. So Partey would be the eight, Jorginho would be the six. Yes, Jorginho would be my six, Partey would be my eight. Or better still, I could play Partey, play Zinchenko and Odegaard, and I play Calafri behind Zinchenko. So Zini, is, Zini plays my left eight and, and and I'd have a solid defender right behind him, either Timba or Calafri. So he's not the defender, he's playing the left eight channel. Let's um, just let's just talk about this quickly though. This midfield right here, I rate them technically, but physically, aren't you worried about Jorginho and Partey? No. No, that's why I said physically I'm worried if we don't retain the ball. But if we keep the ball, I'm not worried, which we know how to do. But we gave Tottenham the ball a lot in the in the game that we won last year we literally just countered them and we're because, of, because of because of how we played and because of the play out the play knowing what we have now on the pitch we now know that this time around we can't give them the ball we have to keep the ball that's the difference it's like when you have players that have the legs then you can let them have the ball because you know they what play about, that line what was our what was our what was our lineup when we went away to tottenham a couple of years ago when we beat them with granite shaka it was granite shaka Partey, and odegaard or granite shaka yes, Jorginho, and odegaard I think it was Granit Xhaka, Partey, and Odegaard. The one where we lost was the one with Jorginho, where he slipped in the mid in the middle of the pitch. And um, I think the one, the one, the one where Ramsdale got, got kicked. The one that Ramsdale got kicked. Kicked in. What was the midfield in that one? I think it was part. It was Jorginho, Jorginho, Partey, and Odegaard. Was we it? won that three 0 right? Yeah. yeah, we won that one. Three, was it three 0 or three one? No, no, no. Uh, the one we lost. Uh, no, we won that one two 0 we won that one. Too. Yeah, I know we won, but I know there's one where, if I remember correctly, Jorginho slipped in the middle of the in the pitch uh, where he. No, slipped. that was that was the draw last year at home. Last year, yeah. So, so the midfield if, if, that we if we kick if we keep the ball, I think we do, but we do well. Okay, you know what? Last year, uh, uh, two years ago, we won with Eddie and Kitty up top, so. There's always there's always times where you have holes in your team. You just have to you just have to find ways to win. Like I, yeah, that's I, that's all that's all. Like like I just want a situation by regard because I know there's this idea that most Arsenal fans have um, that oh uh, we we got to be able to do um, we, we got to be able to have a standard eleven. What if you don't? And I said this. Remember, I said this before the season started during the transfer. I said I don't care what we do. I just care that. We have players that we can rotate and can play in different positions and we can actually manage ourselves. And the fact that we can score from different different ways is, is a plus for us. In a game where we don't have our midfield that we need, then let's try to get ourselves in positions where even if we can't score from open play, we, we make them concede a lot of those set pieces that we're very good at, you know. And now we have all our giants on the pitch and we should try and make sure that we capitalize on it. You know, if we can convert one or two set pieces... And then just lock up shop in defense. We're good, you know. 
Um, and you know what? We're going to have a lot of time to talk about that North London Derby since we have two weeks to discuss it. And it is international break. This is the end of this video. Hopefully everyone enjoys it. Please do hit that like button on the way out if you haven't already done so. Deo, you got anything to say to the people before we go? Nah, man. Just enjoy the break. Have fun. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks at the North London Derby. Of course, we'll still do more video streams and appear on other shows. Uh, but till then, enjoy. Have fun, guys. Peace.